cranked up a little bit. It's Mercer under flank. Get it started. Get it started. It's right. It's right. It's right. It's terrible. Oh, my God. Get out of the way, please. Get out of the way. It's running. Bursting into flames. And, and it's falling on the morning fast. And all the folks between the This is terrible. This is the worst of the worst catastrophes in the world. Oh, it's, 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 it's like 20. Oh, Four or five hundred feet into the sky, and it, it's a terrific crash, ladies and gentlemen. The smoke and the flames now, and the the airship Hindenburg, the largest dirigible ever built, and the pride of Nazi Germany, bursts into flames upon touching its mooring mast in Lakehurst, New Jersey, killing 36 passengers and crew members on May 6, 1937. On May 3, 1937, the hydrogen floated Hindenburg departed from Frankfurt, Germany bound for the first of 10 round trip crossings to America. Not that the Hindenburg was new to Atlantic crossings, in 1936, it had transited the Atlantic, often to Brazil, 34 times. It supplied this service, because in that era aircraft crossings of the Atlantic were still impossible, the Hindenburg trips were intended to ferry passengers over the ocean, bringing them to Naval Air Station Lakehurst, in Manchester Township, New Jersey, just outside of New York City. At Lakehurst, a mooring mast for airships awaited. Once tied up, the Hindenburg's 36 passengers could depart, where they would be picked up by representatives from American Airlines, who had contracted with the Hindenburg's parent company for this transatlantic shuttling. Then the passengers would be transported to Newark Airport, to catch connecting Continental airplane flights. Hindenburg's Atlantic crossing was relatively uneventful, other than some headwinds, that slowed U.S. landfall over Boston by about an hour. Then, once in the New York area, thunderstorms and bad weather, thwarted the scheduled late morning or early afternoon rendezvous at Lakehurst. To avoid the storm, Hindenburg Captain Max Press, recharted his course over Manhattan and out into the Atlantic, to wait until the storm blew through. By 6.22 p.m., the storms had passed, and Captain Press ordered his ship to Lakehurst, almost a half day late. By 7 p.m. on May 6, 1937, the Hindenburg was on final approach to Lakehurst. The Naval Air Station was the selected choice, because its mooring mast had a winch. Large airships like the Hindenburg, dropped its lines and cable to be run down through the mast, and into the winch, which then would slowly pull the airship to the ground, allowing the passengers to depart. This procedure was known as a flying moor. Then the winds began to shift, and Captain Press, was having to make sharp left turns on approach, and manage the Hindenburg's propeller thrust, in order to keep the airship's nose directed at the mooring mast. Twice, as the airship began to drop in altitude, from 650 feet to 295 feet, the airship had to make hard left turns into the wind. It was said to be a challenging landing. Still, at 295 feet, the mooring lines were dropped to the ground, as a light rain began to fall. Then, with the Hindenburg finally tied into the ground winches, and as things were finally calming, at 7.25 p.m., the Hindenburg caught fire, the flames bursting from somewhere near the stern of the airship though eyewitness accounts of exactly where the flames first emerged vary. Some say it was near the airship's top steering or stabilizing fin. Others say the fire burst through the airship's port side. An airship destroyed in less than half a minute. As the Hindenburg's flaming tail began to drift, toward the earth, the flames moved forward through the different hydrogen holding cells, toward her bow. The ship began falling precipitously. When the airship's stern hit the earth, the fire burst through the airship's nose cone. The entire disaster was over in less than 40 seconds. Crouch says, when adding the static charge to the flammable dope skin, and with the vast stores of hydrogen, that lay waiting just beneath, a good possibility exists, that that's what caused the Hindenburg to catch fire, and burn its way into modern memory, and history. But yet the actual reason remain ambiguous. While the May 6, 1937 disaster will be forever remembered,